Howdy, y'all. I'm Brylin. So there was a pretty major story that broke yesterday it, about a third attempt on Trump's life at a rally he held in Coachella. This was one of the major headlines that came out yesterday. Armed man arrested outside Trump's Coachella rally. And sheriff says it was a possible third attempt on his life. Everybody was posting videos and articles and ex posts about how this was a definite third attempt on Trump, but I think we need to look a little deeper into it. Now, I was actually going to research and film and post a video yesterday about this as well, but the more I looked into everything, the more I felt very uneasy about jumping the gun with what information we had yesterday. And after confirming certain things, well, I decided to wait and, well, I'm going to show you all of the information and the facts that we have up until this point about whether or not this was actually a third attempt on Trump's life. Now, this video is not necessarily a defense or an attack of Vem Miller. I'm just presenting you the information that I have found, but I would love to hear your thoughts in the comment section below as well. Hey, real quick, would you hit that thumbs up button? You know when you like this video to get pushed out to more people and it would really help spread the truth. Now I'm going to show you from Vem Miller. I'm going to show you from his own words what he had to say. He actually posted a video on Rumble uh, that was over an hour long. Obviously, we're not going to watch the entire hour long video. And then I'm going to show you what the sheriff, Sheriff Bianco of Riverside County. This actually used to be my sheriff when I lived in Southern California. I'm going to show you what he had to say about all of this as well. And I'm going to show you how he answers the question if he really did call this a third Trump assassination attempt. I'm also going to show you this video of a close personal friend of Vem Miller that explains why he had the weapons in his car, the multiple IDs and passports, and you know all that stuff. Now again, I say this as someone who was waiting for more and more information to come out, but in the meantime, wanted to show the information that we do have. Now, here's a succinct clip of Vem Miller defending himself. This is actually a clip that I got that was pieced together by Crowder. I'm a Trump caucus captain. I've collected votes for Donald Trump, and I'm also a Trump team leader. I would say in the last four years, I've been to a countless number of Trump rallies and Trump events. I have been, and this is again verifiable, pretty much this far away from the former president to a point that I could touch him. I've talked to Don Jr. I've talked to Eric Trump. I know a lot of people within the Trump family and the extended family. And I have been integrally involved. And if I was to guesstimate, and this is again verifiable, I'm sure the Trump campaign has records of all the guest passes they've issued me, the special passes they've issued me. I mean, we're talking about potentially, I don't know, 20, 20 something more. Now he also goes on in his video on Rumble to explain that all of these allegations are false. He walks you through exactly what happened when he got to the rally and uh, subsequently being arrested. In fact, he told the media here, I always travel around with my firearms in the back of my truck. I've literally never even shot a gun in my life. I don't even know anything about guns. I am beyond a novice. Also, two unnamed sources close to the Trump campaign told Fox News that they do not believe the incident in Coachella Valley was an attempt on the former president. The Riverside County Sheriff Department said Miller was taken into custody without incident on suspicion of possession of a loaded firearm and possession of a high-capacity magazine. They also said that this incident did not impact the safety of the former president or the attendees whatsoever. And in fact, no federal arrest has been made at this time and the investigation is still ongoing. Another thing that made this kind of sketchy is that it's been reported that Miller was released on $5,000 bail. Would they have just released <laughs> Miller the same day on $5,000 bail? But even, you know, Charlie Kirk, who was one of the people that uh, posted about this third attempt on Trump's life uh, when all the news was just starting to come out. 
he put out a few updates after the fact. And one update he put out, this was the last update he put out about it so far. He said, I'm hearing from grassroots sources that Vem Miller is a MAGA guy and that the sheriff might have bad information. Regardless, if they released him on 5K bail, the story already doesn't make sense. Keeping my eyes out. Now, there's been lots of people, even including the quartering. He said, I'm pretty sure I hung out with this guy in the creator space at the RNC. He 100% seemed like a pro-Trump guy and all around pretty friendly. This situation is odd. Waiting for more information. And this is one of the first videos that was released of Vem Miller. This is him at the RNC. Watch this. So one thing I don't get is that everything at this convention, at the Republican National Convention, is uh, cashless. This whole place is cashless. So I don't know. See, that's a Republican National Convention behind me. Wonderful people, wonderful time. Just not happy that it's all cashless. Now, this is apparently a co-worker of Vem Miller. And she says that this is absolutely, that there's absolutely no universe where his intention was to hurt Trump. He's worked too hard in this movement to expose the DS and all the people against him. And there's lots of people in the comment section talking about how I just had a feeling that something was off about this. In my opinion, this is a ruse to distract the general public from the Tim Wall scandal that's currently dropping today. The timing is impeccable. Listen to what Sheriff Bianco had to say about this situation. And then I'm going to show you how he answered the question of whether he called this a third attempt on Trump's life. The, the name that we have, and I'm going to put an asterisk by it as I explain this later, but we have his name as Vem, V-E-M, Miller, M-I-L-L-E-R, and his birth date is 10-26 of 1974. He approached the outside perimeter, gave all indications that he belonged there, that he was, uh, that he had, that he was a participant that was allowed to get into VIP and to uh, and, and a press corps, and so he was allowed through that outer perimeter. As he got to the inside perimeter where deputies were conducting obviously a more thorough uh, evaluation of the vehicles that were coming in, there were many irregularities that popped up. The deputy noticed that the interior of the vehicle was in quite disarray. The vehicle had a uh, an obviously fake license plate, and that prompted further investigation from our deputy into why the person was where, why the person was there, and what he was doing. During that investigation, uh, the deputy eventually found multiple passports with multiple names, multiple driver's license with different names. The vehicle was unregistered and the license plate was what we in law enforcement would recognize as one that is homemade and indicative of a group of individuals that claim to be sovereign citizens and uh, mm. we and assuming the deputy assumes that he would that he was part of of that identifying group so during the investigation he, obviously those identification documents were found in addition to a loaded handgun and a shotgun uh, the person was taken into custody uh, he was eventually booked into jail on those charges and eventually uh, he was he was released uh, he will he will have to further his court case uh, is in the in the future uh, right now we are actively uh, engaged in working with Secret Service and the FBI to ensure that this person is followed up on and all of the information that they can gather. I can tell you that from from my perspective, from from a state law enforcement agency's perspective, the the firearms charges is what we arrested him for and booked him on. Uh, anything further will come from the federal government. And quite frankly, I don't know if we will be a part of that. We will certainly be a part of that investigation and cooperating with them. But those charges, if any, will come from them. They will not come from us. Well, you can hear that this wasn't exactly what everybody was hoping for, for him to come out and just give all the information to say that this was 100% an attempt on uh, President Trump. Now, this is how the sheriff answered the question when he was asked if he did call it a third 
possible attempt on Trump's life. Basically, I, I, I honestly, I, I will be honest with you, I don't remember saying that, but it certainly would be something I did say because it, it's something that in the last 12 hours we've talked about extensively of, of what happened. Now, he says he doesn't remember saying that, even though that was a part of every major uh, headline. But he also goes on to say that, thank God that they're, you know, talking about it this way and not after something happened or there was an attempt on his life saying, what could we have done better? Again, this was a, a half hour long uh, video that they did addressing this. Can't watch the whole thing. You can go watch it on Riverside County Sheriff's YouTube channel. Now, 100%. I mean, I think that with everything that's gone on with all the attempts on, you know, Trump's life and all the plots that have been uncovered, uh, you know, I've covered this on my channel extensively in several videos, multiple, multiple videos uh, showing how things aren't adding up with the Secret Service, with how things were handled, with all the plots going on. So I'm 100% down for there being extreme measures to protect Trump's life being taken. Miller is denying everything and looks like he's been a Trump supporter for many, many years. I want to show you this video as well. This is this was actually linked by Vem Miller. This man is a close uh, personal friend of Vem Miller, and this is what he has to say of what he's learned about everything that has gone on. And I just want to point out, I don't know this man either, but again, this was linked by Vem Miller. My name is Steve Sampson. I'm president of Veterans and in Politics International, president of Nevada Veterans Association, and... I'm a huge Trump supporter, have been ever since his first election in 2016, caucused for him. I'm sure you heard the disturbing news about Vem Miller. Vem Miller is a true blue, true red patriot. He's a Trump supporter. He loves Trump, always talks about Trump. Vem is a documentary filmmaker. And uh, I am sure you guys heard what the media is saying about Vem Miller, okay? Vem Miller is no assassin, okay? Vem Miller is my friend, has been my friend for many years. I've been friends with Vem, I've been friends with his parents, and Vem has come to my home, I've been to Vem's home. Vem Miller is no assassin. And for the media to spread such heinous rumors is unspeakable, okay? They talked about them had different passports in his vehicle on the different names. Vem Miller changed his name when he ran for Assembly District 13. And the reason why he changed his name is because folks had a hard time pronouncing his name even i have a hard time pronouncing his birth name and uh he changed his name so that you the voters could <laughs> say it better and go to the voting booth and vote for him because usually a lot of candidates change their name ask clark county district court judge annie alberson she changed her name when she ran for judge so it's no different from Vem. Now, again, this is Vem's close personal friend who claims that Vem has changed his name because of the difficulty of his birth name. And that's why he had several different IDs and passports and uh, things like that. Now, nothing was addressed as far as like the fake plates or unregistered car. Um, so, you know, there, there is still some, I guess, sketchy stuff. I think without a doubt, this shows us that we really do need to be careful about how quickly we jump the gun. Otherwise, we're just uh, like the same as the lamestream media of just putting out all this fake news that isn't valuable to anybody. It just creates confusion and chaos. You know, I want you to check out Proverbs chapter 19. You know, even though it feels like sometimes that liars and deceivers and you know, the mainstream media, the elites that shape the narrative in our society, even though it feels like they get away with constant lies and deception and try to twist the truth to get you to believe what isn't 
real. And, you know, the Bible says that in the last days that evil will be called good and good will be called evil. Well, check out what Proverbs 19 says here. A false witness will not go unpunished, and he who breathes out lies will not escape. And then back down in verse 9 as well, it repeats a similar thing. A false witness will not go unpunished, and he who breathes out lies will perish. Ultimately, God is in control of heaven and earth. But hey, let me know your thoughts about all this in the comment section below. I would love to hear from you. And if you wouldn't mind hitting that subscribe button, join this community. I would love to hear from you on a regular basis. And please hit that thumbs up button. You know when you like this video, it'll get pushed out to more people and it would really help spread the truth. All right, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.